Well, today we're going to be camming up the 1022 Ruger takedown. So, pretty much, we're going to get this out and take this stock off. We're going to paint this stock. We're going to paint this part of the stock. We're going to leave um, the trigger grouping alone. We're going to paint the top section of this with stove black along with this silver barrel. And we're going to leave the, light, the sights there alone. So, pretty much. What we start off with is this one screw. We're going to undo this, and this whole section, um, the gun section, is going to come off. So I'll just grab my screwdriver here, and I'll see if I can place this on my knee to some degree to where you guys can see what the heck I am doing here. And then we turn just that one screw till it comes out. And you want to make sure the safety is off, sort of almost halfway, so when you push it, this whole section just drops out. Now you want to watch this hole here, you got this little spacer pin, you just want to keep that in there because um, it's you, you don't want to lose it. Um, if you let it fall out, put it somewhere where, where you know, so you, you of course it doesn't go missing. So. That piece is going to sit down. We're going to tape that part up because we're all only going to be painting this top section and we're going to leave the bolt alone. You can take the bolt out and paint it separately, but I'm just going to do it basically the lazy man's way by, by taping it off. And that way I don't have to disassemble too much. Um, in fact, actually, for just for the sake of it, I think I'll take the bolt out. It's just going to make it easier. And then we're going to tape off these sights. I'm going to undo this screw here and that screw there and this um, this barrel will come off so we'll do that so what I've done is I've taken that screw out that was holding this clamp we're gonna cam up this this clamp piece as well so um, we're gonna take it with us to our spray booth or where we're gonna be doing our spraying um, you can leave it black if you want it won't really matter um, I just personally want to cam it up I think it'll look better um, I could leave it black but of course, among your cam, you're going to have this black ring, which might stand out a bit. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and, and paint it while I'm at it. So next, I'm going to undo this little screw here. We'll see if we can do it like so. And that screw looks like it was starting to rust, actually. So. Good thing I'm doing this now. I left my truck in, or <laughs> I left my gun in the truck, and um, it started to rust. So I got it out of there. It was just a a bad idea to store it in the truck. Okay. So this barrel should just pop out now. I think I'm just going to turn this off for a second. Okay, so yeah, it just uh, plopped out. So that's out now. We're gonna tape up this section with the um, the basic the the grab clip here that helps clip it onto the uh, the gun section. So basically, what we're gonna be camming with the cam Krylon cam paint is this stock, this ring, and this stock, and that's pretty much it as far as cam paint. This guy's getting stove blacked along with this. I could uh, cam paint this because this isn't going to get very hot, but it'll just collage in with this, and I mean it won't look too bad. But I think personally, it, I I just rather have it flat black um, than having the camo on top. Uh, the flat black won't won't reflect light. Um, I don't think the, the cam paint would reflect light necessarily, but I think it just looks sort of tacky being cammed here within a stove black barrel as to just being all stove black. So just a ca cosmetic reason I'm, I'm deciding to stove black it. So um, before I paint, I'm going to take steel wool and I'm just going to brush everything just to help take off some grease slick that might be there. And then I'm going to wipe it down with a dry rag. And we're pretty much ready to paint once I've taped up my sights, once I tape those off because I don't want paint on them. So we're pretty much almost ready to paint. One thing I forgot to mention is how to take this apart. So we're going to do that just right now. 
I'm going to try and set this up in a way that you guys can see what I'm doing here without too much difficulty. Okay, this might work. So, there's a pin here, and there's a pin here. You want to push both those out. So I got one out. And this other one tends to be a tiny little bit tighter. I just need a smaller uh, punch here. Uh, here we go. Use the end of the file. But yeah, you just push, take that out, and this triggered group drops out. That goes to the side. We don't want to paint that. And what you have is there's a spring and a rod on this. And pretty much you just, I think you just pull the spring if I remember right. Or do I, oh yeah, okay. So you, you pull this block all the way back and the bolt should just drop out. And then you take this, this section and we've got this out. So it's empty. So we're going to tape the inside of this all so it doesn't get any paint. We're going to tape this section. Um, in fact, I don't think we need to worry about that. I'm going to stove black that little piece too. So we're just going to tape really the inside around that screw hole and around this, this section here is where we don't want any paint. But the rest of it, I'm just going to go ahead and stove black it because um, it'll give it a little bit more longevity. It'll just make it Basically, it'll just make it last longer and give it some heat resistance, too. Um, but mostly, it's, it's a cosmetic thing. I, just, I don't like the silver. It's just too bright. And it reflects at nighttime. Uh, reflects my flashlight when I'm trying to do varmint kills and whatnot. So, just to make it easier for me, I'm going to darken it down. So... Anyway, I'm just taping up the sights right now. It's really just the markings of the sights I don't want um, compromised with stove black because what I have is a diamond and a little dot sight. And I really like them and I don't want to lose it. So, just going to do that. So I've got that rear sight taped so he doesn't get any tape on the uh, the bead. And because my sight, front sight's almost black anyway, what I have here is just this little bead that I definitely want to protect. So I'm just going to do this. Fold that over. And I'm just going to fold that for the blade and I think we're good so I think we're pretty much ready to, to paint this now I've got the sights taped I've got that all dismantled with the bolt got it I'm gonna tape the inside of this so let's go ahead and do that Getting a little bit ahead of myself In fact, this is a point where you can stuff it with stuff too. You've got old tape or Kleenex, things like that. You can stuff the inside here with that. And um, let's see what I've got here. I think I've got some old Kleenex stuff. I got this old tape from previous painting. What I'm going to do is just stuff it all in there and just on the inside of where the bolt track goes. When I do that, what I'm doing is I'm just basically making a big wad block so paint doesn't go inside where the bullets need to travel and where the rails are that this bolt needs to go. Because any paint you have, you don't want metal on metal. If you have paint in between where metal slides, it's gonna jam, just plain and simple. So we don't want that. So we're going to cram this up with tape and then 
get it sort of masked. And then just stuff it in the holes like that. Just keeps the receiver free of any paint trying to jam up anything. There. And now, just run some tape over the top. Keep it all in there. There. So, I call that taped enough. Um, we're going to go ahead and pretty much start um, start painting now. So, got to set up a spray booth and then we'll get at her. Well, Correction, I had a lot more taping to do. I had to tape up this whole back end here because that goes inside the gun. Don't want paint jamming it up. I've still got a little bit of cleaning up on the tape to do. Just showing you, I've got this also taped, this this uh, box spring section that helps grab the gun to, to hold itself. Uh, you don't want any of that being compro compromised with, um, with paint. So I taped that up as well. So we're pretty much ready to stow black now. So, we're pretty much ready to stow black with this barbecue self-priming butone paint. And you shake it up good. And you want to do a test spray first. Just to make sure it's spraying evenly. And then we just stove black. You don't want to go too thick or it's going to start to dribble and spew all over the place. You just sort of do thin coats overlapping. And that's pretty much all you do. Then you let it dry. And then if you want to do another coat, you do it again. And when you do this for the 1022 takedown especially, make sure you set it up to your barrel. Get it all together. So all you have to do is snap it together. Um, if you don't do that, this little set thing, because you set that once and it's good to go. So you want to spray it after you've set it, otherwise it might stick on you and you might have some issues. Just keep that in mind. But nevertheless, and you don't want to plug up your um, serial numbers or your uh, la like l labeling of what, what kind of gun it is. For if you ever sell it, of course, um, it's going to be issues, but if you uh, cover up the serial number it can be a felony so if you do cover it with paint make sure you scrape it back out so you can read that serial number so we'll let that dry and then I'm gonna have to flip over my barrel and do the other side and I'll probably want to do a couple coats like this it's really not gonna take too much um, stuff dries pretty quick especially the black enamel the uh, Krylon uh, camo paint dries pretty quick too, but uh, not as fast as the stove black enamel. So, do a view. Oops. 
So there. Oh, I'll do a bit more on this side here. But I think we're pretty much good for that. So we're, we'll wait for this barrel just to dry a bit and I'll flip it over and get the other side done. And then we'll be on to the camo painting and I'll show you how to do that. Um, there's many ways of doing it. I'll just show you a quick way that I learned and it works well and it's really simple. Sort of no, no stencils and it's stupid simple and yet it does a pretty good pattern. Okay, here we are. You can see silver sides back up. We flipped it over and we'll just give her another spray down under this side down. You just want to keep it evenly thin. You don't want it to glob up and spit out big chunks of paint or basically it to pile up and start start running all over the place. That just sucks. And even though this has the marine coat, um, this metal still rusts, I find. Um, so that's why another reason I'm doing this rust coat. Or this, uh, sorry, butone heat resistant self priming uh, stove black. It's a flat black it, and it's heat resistant. So as this barrel gets hot, it's not going to be an issue that some paints might have. So that's all that has to do with this. But also, it won't rust. I won't have this weather weathering issue that I've had in the past. I just just rub my can on this and rub some paint off. So I just reset that. Okay, so those are ready to pretty much dry. I'll just leave it as that, and we will come back to those and pretty much take the tape off, and our gun will be ready to put together at that point. Um, we're going to start camming up these stocks now. So here we are, we've got our cam paints. These are the two colors I've chosen to go with. These are sort of the theme I'm working with as far as most of my um, guns that I'm camming up right now. Just doing a two coat, uh, or sorry, two color. Uh, you can get brown and black as well for these colors and you can always add them in. You get four colors, uh, you're going to have a bit better breakup. It all depends on what you're trying to match. That's one thing about camo is there's not one camo that works for all. You sort of want to match it for your your environment and the environment that I'm using in. These are sort of your dominant colors, this sort of tan. As you can see, the grass right here, this is everywhere that I'm dealing with. And it's just this more or less green and tan. So it's what I'm working with. And um, it's uh, I do have brown paint and I could add brown to this, like I said, and it will be better in theory because you get three colors in camo sort of makes uh, the illusion of three dimensions. It's kind of how the the, the coloring works. So, um, but in this case, it's just two. But as they blend, I sort of have that third color that gets smeared in there. So it does work very well. And we're basically going to get right into it. I've got my three pieces that I want to basically do up with cam. I've got my barrel and my uh, receiver cover still um, still drying, but they'll be uh, ready pretty soon. They'll be ready probably before these stocks are ready. So it's perfect. So we're just going to get right into it. And what I like to do is there's two ways you can do with it. Um, do this. You can start off with your green, and then you can go tan, or you can go tan, which is your light color, then work with your green. Um, I've sort of experimented with both, and I find that tan is easier to work with first and then you add your green and um, it just in my opinion it blends a little bit better but it it works either way um, the thing is is when you have a darker color you sort of need more lighter color to bring that out if you start with a light color all you need to do is add a little bit dark and it darkens it up really easily so that's why I find it's best just to go with tan first but it will work green. I just find you have to use a little bit more green sometimes to, to bring out your light color if, if you want it brighter. So I'm just going to get these lids off. There we go. Got them off. Uh, they're a little shitty. They're hard to take off. So that's one downside to these cans, I find. Every time I try and open it, I just end up busting the top. But they're sort of a one-time use anyway. So I got my tan. I'm just shaking it. All right, so this is what we're thriving for. 
This is the camo jobs I've been doing on basically all my guns and I got one of my knives done. And this is the smoky effect that I'm going to be aiming for um, with this 1022 Ruger. So just to basically show you that's the camo paint job that I want to do. So I'll show you how to do it. So we're pretty much here and we got our tan. It's coming out nice and evenly so we're just going to basically just give it a quick little just a quick little spraying like so. And that's that side. That's that side. And that's probably good. Because you don't have to go extreme. We're going on a few other colors here. So don't go absolutely mental. You're only going to waste paint. So now we're going green. Make sure it's coming out even. And you just sort of give it a splotch there. And what I sort of do is just do these X's. Like so. And then and that's sort of just what you do. You just do X's and you can do a little bit of a spritz here and there just to give it some dulling. See how it spots it? Or you could go straight out and do a heavy line. But it's just sort of you know, as she goes. And then if you find some sections are just a bit too dark, you just lighten them up again. And then you can darken it up and just play with it. And you'll find that you'll end up getting sort of a, a cool little camo effect. And if you do it when it's wet, the colors will actually sort of smear together, smear together as, um, as, as it dries and I find as it dries it lightens up a bit your, your color so as you can see I've sort of have a bit of And there's really not really a wrong way to do this but you see you can get sort of a cool little effect going just by um, just playing with with your colors so we'll do this one we'll oh, wrong. there we go got some green and we'll lighten that up a tad and if you go closer, you can get a, a thinner band. And if you go further away, you get a wider band. So. No, I think I'm happy with that. And you want to get these ends here. Make sure you don't miss them, otherwise you're just going to have more stuff exposed. But Add a bit more uh, there. So we'll let that dry. See how it looks. Um, you can always paint over the dry too, if you figure it's too much, um, if it's too, too light or too dark. You can just brighten up a little bit just by adding more paint. But anyway, just uh, You want to catch all three dimensions of this uh, thing, so um, you don't want to forget certain sections of it. 
there. So I just did spots that time. And I'll run a couple lines through here. Starting to somewhat cam up. But anyways. Just um, sort of, yeah. So I think we'll keep it like that, and I'll, I'll let this dry for a bit. Then we're gonna flip it over and do the other side, and um, yeah, we'll see how it looks. I'm gonna add a bit more tan to my ring, just because I think it could use it. I'm gonna add a bit more tan into here. Anyway, I think we'll uh, pretty much let this just, I think we're almost ready to let it dry out. There. I think we'll add a bit more tan on the, uh, the splotching. And we'll add a bit more green, but I don't know. You could pretty much do this forever. It just um, can change up your, your pattern a little bit. If you want to do stripes, that's fine. If you want to do splotches, that's fine, really. But um, you just really want to break up the, try and break up the shape a bit. There. I'll leave it at that. Um, I kind of I keep on saying I'll, I'll leave it at that, but <laughs> I don't know. That stripes are almost sticking out too much, in my in my opinion. There. I like that better. All right. Um, just to match it up a little bit, I think I'll. Brighten this up just a tiny little bit. There. I think that's good. So we gotta let this guy dry. We gotta flip him over, do the other side, and then we gotta let this dry. And we'll just do the other side too. Um, the other side's not much. It's just a little bit of top uh, section, which you'll see because the, the barrels and whatnot are going to basically rest on there. So I think this is dry. It is. So these guys are pretty much ready to rock and roll once, once our stock's dried out. And then we'll assemble the gun. Um, I did forget to add some hand to this. There we go. I think that that'll do. I can always um, paint it when it's back on the gun as well. So that's pretty much it. Um, the next part's going to be when we flip this guy over to paint the other side. And then we'll be putting the gun together. And 
That'll be my tactical takedown 1022 Ruger, the um, my little survival gun. It's almost dry now. And as you can see, the color's really standing out. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what it's going to look like. So, I think we're going to flip these around, and we're going to get on painting the other side now. Okay, so we're just going to do the other side. And as you can see, this top section where the barrel sits in, it's all black. So, we're going to paint that as well. So, we don't want to forget it. we got three dimensions to a gun. You basically want to get all, all dimensions. So, we'll just go green. And we'll just do some ten stripes just for the heck of it and we'll leave it that um, I might need to touch it up a little bit um, but for now that's good now we're on to this this guy and we want to go with our tan again just light and then we'll go green See, just did stripes. And we'll go. I don't know if I'm too busy concentrating on what I was doing. I didn't, don't think I caught it on tape, but that's all right. So you can just see what I'm doing. I'm just doing layers. Just like so. And add a bit of that. And I think I'll just add a bit of tan on the handle, even though it doesn't really matter too much. But there. So, get the tan over here. And we'll do this just a bit more. I was just uh, getting these areas that are not touched that well. There, I'm just trying to match up the edges so it sort of looks like it all was deliberately done like that. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to make it look a little bit more like a professional finished job as to a uh, just a cut mold glued together. <laughs> I don't know the best way to describe it, but anyways, there we go. So we're just going to let this dry now. Um, I might want to darken it a little bit more, but I think I'll let that dry and see what it looks like. And then we're probably going to be putting it together. Um, I think I've got all angles of the gun. I see there's a scratch right here. I'm just going to add some green on that and see if I can hide it a bit. But I'm a little, I don't know, that went a little globuly. That's trying to what you're, what you're trying to avoid is putting on with like a puddle. But it's okay. I've already got dirt falling on it from the sky. It's the problem about doing it outdoors is you get bugs and stuff trying to compromise your, your work. It's very frustrating. It is a little cooler today so that does help. 
But anyways, I believe my gun is cammed. I will let this dry. I'll come back out in about 20 minutes, and I'll probably be putting my gun back together. So, um, yeah, you'll be seeing the finished product, and that's pretty much the way I cam up a gun, um, as far as painting goes. It's, uh, yeah, it's simple, even though, like, it's hard to describe. Like, it, it's really, really simple. It's, it seems harder than it is. Um, that's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> Okay, so we've stove blacked this, and we're now gonna put it back together. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is, sorry, I have to balance this camera on my knee. First thing I'm gonna do is take all the tape off. There, that was easy. So, we've done that part. Now, so, that clean, so we're gonna stick her back together. Uh, you just put it back together the way that you took it apart, but you need to do it right. That's, this piece needs to go in, like so. Then you need to pull this back along this piston till it holds. Drop your bolt in place. Ah. This is where it gets tricky. Um, especially the way I got my camera it does not help. But here, hold on. Okay, so you got your receiver body. You have this bolt handle that just slips into place, and there's a little stopper just right there for your screw or your uh, spring. Then you're going to pull this back and hold it in place, like so. So it's there. Now, this guy, you want that ramp side facing upwards with the receiver facing up towards you. And you want your extractor, which is that thing, facing forward. And you basically drop your bolt in head first. And there. Voila. It's in place. And that's that. So, we'll get to a different view now. Alright, so pretty much all you do is you just... Drop the trigger grouping in. Then you want to put that in place, make sure all your parts are together, and voila. And it locks in place, we're good to go. So, we're going to assemble the gun now. Go for it. All right, so we're pretty much just gonna slap this thing together. We'll start off by dropping the receiver in place once I line everything up because everything is fitting tight. Because of course there's a fucking block in the way because this gravity thing is a bitch. There. <sighs> I'm fighting gravity all day. You gotta really watch these cotter pins on these 1022 Rugers. They just want to fall out all the time. And if you lose them, you're fucked. <laughs> and we just dealt with that. So it looks pretty good so far. Now we gotta get some tape off. What I did was I sprayed these up. I showed them in picture form. You will saw that and I made windows, so I'm just going to take the tape off them now that they're dry. 
uh, you want to get the tape off. Uh, you want to tape up everywhere where parts are sliding in, or you're just going to have tape or paint, I should say, that's going to gather up, and it's just going to cause more jams and problems. So I got a window here, which didn't work very well. Well, shit. <laughs> Sorry about that. So there you go. All camoed. My 1022 Ruger takedown. Now camouflaged.